This is Tiffany Grant, and you're listening to Geek Era. Stupid nerds ruin everything, right? Yeah. Every Jedi, every Sith man. I'm that guy. And I beat battle toads. Yes, I'm a dungeon master. Stay through the credits and Avengers. Every zone that I'm watching, don't you know? Cause there's something after. I'll cure, I'll spoil it for ya. Cause it wasn't even really that great. So don't bother wasting your time here. Let me recommend you something better anyway. I wrote petitions for every show that I'm missing. And my gamer score is dope. I get every item and I finish every mission. Who's got the casting in it? What's that they're doing, man? I gotta sign on, gotta get on a mission for How's it going? This is Sean Alpha. Yo, I'm Mama, and I'm Cosmo. And we're back here with another episode of Geek Era Podcast. Uh, and this week, we're, you know, we're after coming back from our first major convention, which is Belfast Film and Comic Con. Uh, Kazuma, what are your thoughts on... I thought it was pretty good the way it was laid out and everything. Yeah, uh, fantastic thing. Like, I, I think the major event, uh, complaint I think a lot of people have with some of these bigger, major sort of expos is the fact that you can't move yeah. it's like a giant conveyor belt mm. but with this one you were able to move around and see whatever traders you wanted yeah it's like if you had to wait in a line and then like yeah uh, I think the best layout actually had been uh, replay games yeah yeah, they were pretty good this year and had more stuff in, than they usually do and that's just because you're closer to uh, closer to where they usually are like, yeah being in their main center stuff. being out in Derry so mm. uh Fantastic event. Uh, the only major problem was the fact that our, our panel didn't have the, the right things to sort of able to sort of showcase the things we wanted to talk about. Mm. And I think the sort of the guests that we had with us kind of overpowered us at the time. Yeah. Uh, because maybe they were just uh, used to the, that type of format of doing sort of more improv nature type of things. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of major stuff happening. Uh, and a lot of stuff about. As a scene that we just after doing a, uh, an interview with uh, Karen Sakai, mm-hmm. who is getting a lot of stickler lately. Karen Sakai, some people that don't uh, that missed the last episode, uh, is a cosplayer that's based out of Seattle. Mm-hmm. Who, you know, she's ex Navy. She holds two degrees, uh, and she's fundraising for a new pair of tits. Nice. Presumably. If, what's your opinion on this type of situation? Go for it. Well, if she's fundraising, you know, if people want to, you know, donate, throw money towards her way for a new pair of tits, let her. Mm. Absolutely no problem at all. Uh, you know, everyone keeps going, you know, they're, you know, when people are sort of, pro, you know, pro-abortion, you know, so like, it's her body, her choice. Mm. Same thing goes in this matter. If you don't if you don't want her to get a boob job, don't invest money in her. Mm-hmm. But what she does is her own situation. But I was more interested in her backstory of, mm-hmm. you know, she's ex-Navy. She holds two degrees. One in, you know, uh, chimpanzee psychology type of thing. So primate psychology. And that, I think that's really cool the way that sort of... That, that's a huge... Ba- like that, That's a really interesting backstory. Yeah. Uh... But, like, what do you think out of the way the, the podcast is sort of going out now? We have all these, like, really cool interviews to sign up the future. I think we're, I think we're getting there eventually. Oh, yeah, we're, we're yeah. getting there. Uh, so, Kazuma, how are you doing with uh, your reviews at the moment? Um, well, I just completed uh, Hyperdimension Neptune, yeah, and I will be re- reviewing it later tomorrow, hopefully. Ah. Oh. And then hopefully start playing uh, Akiba's Trip on Undead, Undead and Undressed. Oh, what's the? Uh, what's that about? Uh, I think it's a zombie game, but like, I haven't looked at much gameplay of it fully yet. But I think it was like you go over and you take off the clothes to see if there's a zombie or not, and some of them might try to start a fight with you. I think. In, in well, yeah, I, I'd start a fight with you if you try to take off my clothes. Hey, pull down your pants. <laughs> what? That's a penis. Oh. 
Oh, no, another penis. Now, are the zombies, you know, angry that you're taking off their clothes? Well, I don't know if the zombies are trying to find you or just the regular people trying to take off clothes. Ah. Or just try to... Like, if you take off there, the yeah. clothes, do the penis fall off? Because there's a zombie, you know, the, the penis will fall no, off. I have a Spider-Man when he wants to try to mate with you. <laughs> Radioactive no, wait, penis. No, that's actually scientifically accurate. Uh, Spider-Man. Uh, so... Look at it. Spider-Man. And we're back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to talk about a little bit about the news. Kazuma, you have some interesting news pieces that we can talk about. Yeah, so apparently her James Cameron thinks that virtual reality is a bore. Yeah, uh, he was talking to Wall Street Journal uh, this week, and uh, they asked him about what is his feelings on virtual reality technology for video games, and he considered it a bit of a yawn. Uh, not much as, you know, th- th- this is kind of unsurprising. This the guy that introduced 3D technology as far as into the movies, you know, into the cinematic world. What Everyone else is just sort of copying off him at this point. Hmm. Uh, we're really excited to see what he's going to do with some of his other films. What's going to be the next level? You know, if he's, you know, bored virtual reality with video games, what is he working on? Are we talking about a 4D environment? And it became video. Well, in Japan, when uh, the Ringu was in cinemas for, I think it's like its 10-year anniversary. For this reality, there's a different, different parallel reality where you admire a uh, model. Sweet. But, uh, and your wife. Oh. Yeah, so essentially, it, like I know in Japan they have 3D. They also have sort of a 4D element where... Is that the smell one for the head for Avatar? Or is that no, different 4D? Uh, this one is like... Uh, if some more is coming at you, then they have something to grab your leg. Oh, right. Or, you know, your chair will start to shake. Mm. So it really gets you inclusive type of thing, and it's really, you know, spectacular. Maybe that's something that James Cameron is working on at this point. Uh, the dad must be, but he kind of nerfed what, What's your opinion, actually, on virtual reality coming in? Like, what's your opinion um, on all this? Not sure. It's kind of limited to what games you can have for virtual reality, really. Yeah, like, I, I think virtual reality would play a better presence so well, much. It could in, work for Call of Duty, maybe. Call of Duty, maybe horror games. Or if you be, had, like, something like uh, a football that works with it, you could play FIFA, maybe. Kick the ball when it's your turn. Ah, you kept cr- kicking at your other cross for the last five minutes. Whoops. <laughs> now I'm in the toilet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, there's other... Uh, any other news? Plus. Plus. Oh yeah, so apparently uh, we feel special enough being a one in a million. Does it feel less or more important or in one in point seven point nine million? Yeah, that's true. Uh, PlayStation uh, is after announcing there is seven point nine million people subscribed to PlayStation Plus. Yeah, not a few people even get eight. Make it official number. Yeah, I think this the the big push now with uh, the PlayStation TV that's just after being introduced into the marketplace. Uh, people that don't know what a PlayStation Plus is, it, it's kind of like... It's like the gold membership. Of yeah, it, 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 it's like a memory version of... It's like a portable version of the PlayStation Vita Plus device. It can play those devices onto your big TV. It's great for PlayStation Vita uh, people that oh, have the games. I the PS TV. Oh, yeah, the PSV. Uh, but, you know, what, what's your opinion on... You know, 7.9 subscribers. That's good support. You know, as someone who... You've been a PlayStation fan for years now at this mm. point. Do you I think there should be more? PlayStation 1. Do you think there should be more, or they should do something to celebrate the rele- for 7.9? Have, like, a... Uh, maybe have, like, two games that are just being fresh released on PlayStation Plus. I think they should release seven game, seven games or nine games for free on the next, next PlayStation Plus account. Mm. And all name all triple A titles. Uh, yeah, so for another news, they're fantastic. Uh, 
that hasn't amused anyone that's sort of into very obscure anime. The very avant-garde and very strange Belladonna No Tears is being re-released in better quality for the American release uh, that's coming out soon. Uh, Belladonna No Tears is a fictionalized version of Joan of Arc storyline, where I, I've seen it once or twice before. It's very done in... It's not done in anime style. It's more done like as a traditional Japanese painting. But very strange scenes, including one where Joan of Arc makes a deal with the devil, and the devil looks like a giant penis. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's one of the things that actually inspired the, you know, Shin... Uh, the Persona games. Mm. Even the way that some of the designs are sort of done in it. Uh... I think this is a great thing because it introduces a whole new market for, you know, these very obscure titles that are coming out. What do you think of sort of avant-garde sort of strange series coming out again, being re-released in better quality? Sounds pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't think this movie was even VHS. Hmm. Like, it was very hard to get, yeah, maybe in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, a drama, drama theater. Like, I, I've seen it on, uh, I let just you, watched it on YouTube. Let yeah. your imagination know what it's like. I believe it's like it should kill kids program. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in other news, uh, uh, there is a restaurant in Tokyo that is introducing the first pocky th- flavored uh, lattes. Kazuma, as someone who's going over, uh, we're both going over to Japan next November. What's your opinion on this? Mm, chocolate? Yeah, I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. If he if he suffers from an overdose of brain freeze, just head there. Yeah. So they're introducing two new things which is Pocky-flavored cones, I assume for ice cream, mm-hmm. and the other one is going to be Pocky-flavored lattes. Mm-hmm. Well, I assume they're going to have a stick of Pocky in it as well. Yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah, sir. I think that would be a great oh, option. Yeah, mm-hmm. Also, for other people, uh, there's a new crowd that's opening up Manga Apartments. Now, as an anime fan going over to, you know, Manga or Gamer, going over to Japan, we, we want to be where the action is. The action is Akibara. Mm-hmm. You know, that is, you know, infamous and famous for anime, manga, and all sorts of crazy shit. Well, now you can have a manga apartment. Now, cutting down on some of the costs, that, you know, like mini bars and all that type of stuff, you can cut down major costs. And for $46 a night, which breaks out to be around maybe 30, 25 euro. Uh, a night, you can have a manga with up-to-date news, not just up-to-date news, but up-to-date manga, of the cutting-edge manga in there, suitable for uh, foreign audiences. What do you think about this, Kazuma? Sounds pretty good. Yeah, the, the apartments, uh, they, they, they look a little bit small, but with the, the large selection of manga that they have in store, it looks fucking fantastic. Mm. Uh... So for uh, in other news as well, uh, they're after releasing uh, an, another news item where tons of videos are now coming online and have been on for long for a while that apparently Asian schools and particularly uh, Japanese schools still introduce capital punishment within their school system. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, well, th- this is you know uh, th- this is really based on the whole concept of you know. Uh, Japanese and Asian law is sort of all done on respect your authority, respect your Thank elders. You know, so this is really sort of the introduction things. Now a lot of the videos are done through you know camera phones and all this type of thing. But what do you like? What do you think of the, you know they still do capital punishment? Like that's I know it kind of, sounds kind of strange, but like coming from Ireland, no, it's been around since the eighties. Our parents mm. had capital punishment in their schools. I know it, you know it's not right. But what, who are we to comment on? Left. Yeah, there, there's some things on Japanese laws that, you know, we may not agree with, but, you know, we, we can't understand them completely because we're not from that culture. Shogunai. Yeah, shogunai. Uh, your shogunai is your Japanese word for the day. Jamo, what is shogunai? What is the name? Can't be helped, or it is what it is. Uh, it's the Japanese mythos. You know, it, not mythos, uh... Certain mannerisms, they have to, you know, they can never complain about something because they can't change it. You can't change choices that you can't make yourself. You get stuck in traffic. So can I. It's not your fault you got stuck in traffic because everyone, it, it's, yeah, 
It's kind of your fault, but it's I think not it's really. More for restaurants, I think, mm -hmm. uh, what? I think it's more for restaurants and stuff. No, it's for everything. Really? All right. Uh, you know, if you're a Japanese student and you're waiting for your father, and your father hasn't come home all night because he's working late hours, so can I. It's it's just the way that the corporate structure and all that stuff is. Like they work their Japanese salary men to death. I don't get like two bonuses here, and that's for it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, is there any sort of? Oh yeah. Uh, so for people that are into you know football or soccer, as it's known over in America, they're introducing two new things in the Tokyo teams at the moment for their their local soccer teams. Girls on Panzer and a certain scientific railgun are going to be featured in their games. Uh, the, uh, the, main uh, the main antagonist from a uh, certain type of railgun is going to be on the scoreboard, mm -hmm. while Girls on Panzer, there's going to be a tank. There's probably two girls dressed up. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anything else for you? No, that's it. Uh, so, as far as uh, other stuff, you know, what, what do you think about this? Cause, you know, that is interesting, actually. Yeah, I think it's really the way that they're trying to introduce and try to make this sort of sport more popular as well within Tokyo. Uh, are we going to see more stuff? I'm surprised they're not getting, uh, you know, some actual football-related anime mm -hmm. to be advertised the thing instead of that. Uh, oh. So uh, I learned a very interesting piece of information. Now, I know... I'm, I, I'm kind of sick of this at this point with, you know, the whole amp up to Christmas. But I found out something really interesting. Uh, I found out the reason why Japanese people get KFC. Because the, the chicken gravy to just bring home? <laughs> no. Alright, so it is common knowledge for most anime fans and most people that have ever been to Japan or lived in Japan at this point that Japanese people get KFC around Christmas time. But I did not know, and I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure that you didn't know as well that there, what you know, they right. didn't do. No, it's because you can't get turkey over in Japan. Oh, so they have it in KFC for Christmas. Yeah, well, the closest thing that they can get is probably KFC, mm. uh, because apparently you have to like wait five weeks to get KFC in. In really? Japan, for like around Christmas time, uh -huh. and it's extremely expensive. Uh, I, I thought it was just a really interesting fact. I never really knew myself. Like, remember the Love Hina Christmas special? Mm. He was getting KFC. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that, that's a news break, and uh, coming up next, we're going to be talking about uh, Venus Angelic and the whole incident between Ertacon and Venus Angelic. Stay tuned. And we're back talking about uh, Ericon, Ericon, and Venus Angelic. Uh, Damon, do you know who Venus Angelic is? I thought I heard of her. She's like the anime slash barbish kind of look, kind of cosplay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. She kind of does. It's more of a Lolita fashion thing, but mm. she's more famous for her makeup tutorials and stuff like that. So there. She's recently been announced as Ericon's uh, first special guest for the convention. And it's kind of hit maybe a sour patch. Mm. Venus Angelic looks like a creepy fucker, but she has done some very unmoralistic acts in the past to raise money. Mm. Some of those include. Uh, Charging Japanese salary men to dress up as a doll to go around uh, for videos for fat material. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two. She's uh, she's done a fundraiser before uh, through her fans, so she can go back to a German a German school. She's from England, and she's originally from Germany, uh, Hungary, uh, but. She had something like she wanted to raise something like twelve thousand pounds, but it was something like six thousand or nine thousand pounds what she actually needed. Mm -hmm. One, why doesn't she go to a public school? Mm -hmm. It's probably a lot cheaper. She can go to a regular school, which would be free. 
and she's a special guest at this convention giving a talk on cyberbullying. Mm-hmm. Now, there's also been talks about that she's been known to do this before in some of her videos, deleting people, blocking others from responding to stuff on their page, and all types of stuff like that. Kazuma, what, what's your opinion on all this? Because this, this, this is a very controversial stance at this point. Uh, I think if you don't be cyberbullied, just put your profile on private. Yeah, it's kind of hard than that. a lot of problems. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this, this is the thing here. Uh, it's that way people won't be able to know you're on the site or wherever it is. Yeah. Unless you accept them first. Uh, now, here's the thing. There, there's been people that are so strongly against it. That supposedly that there's been death threats or threats to beat the shit out of her. Mm. I think there's... This is our opinion. You don't have to follow our opinion completely. If you feel strongly on the situation that you don't want her, you don't want to be around her, don't pay her any attention. Don't, you know, don't go to her panel. So she doesn't come back. Mm. Make sure she doesn't come back as a special guest next year. Uh... If you want, if you feel that strongly about it, that you would rather want to beat the shit out of her or try to kill her, mm-hmm. put your money where your mouth is. If you disagree with Ertikon or the or her that much, this is what you need to do. You need to unlike Ertikon and not go to the convention. One year, enough that it makes enough of an impact and there's enough of you guys out there that you know it shows it tells Air to Calm listen these guys are pissed off we need to get other people that more show a more positive message that people just don't disagree there's other there's people that uh, you know don't want uh, you know that wouldn't like a particular voice actor because they don't like the series or they've never seen the series that this voice actor has been in. That's a different situation. People feel so strongly on the matter, on this particular matter. Kuzuma, what do you think? Do you think this is a good approach to this? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, because you're sending air to kind of message and you're not being in a threatening manner. Mm. <sighs> it seems ridiculous because... I, I, I don't know we, we've never seen any of the messages or something like that it's just been an official statement that they're not going to treat this as a lightly matter as far as convention is going and then audience people that want to go to the convention if you feel that strongly on the situation don't go to the convention just don't there's other conventions OtakuCon's a month after that it's a month after Erdogan Dang. uh you know, well, we're not gonna. You know, I know there's you know the Vocaloid, uh, the Vocaloid fan project, but there's a, there's another year. Hats, Hatsune Miku is coming to England next year. Mm-hmm. There we go. There, there's others always. There's always optional things. You spend the same amount of money going to a convention for three days. It, if what you can go to a holiday. And probably do the same stuff that you'd be doing in the convention, regardless. Mm. We like going. We like going to conventions because of the community feel it usually get the convention. But we have the, we do the same thing. You know, we we get the same enjoyment out of going to Japanese meetups, mm. um, or <laughs> Zuma uh, playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards with you, or vice versa. Um, yeah. Sports <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the, sort of our stance on the matter. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about Naruto, a hindsight of the, the last the film or the end of the series, just it's overall. Just the last, is it? Or? Yeah, because it's the last ever because the series is wrapping up. So stay Probably tuned. Gotcha. Oh. And we're back, and we're going to be talking about one of the biggest things that's happened to really the anime industry in a good long time. Kazuma, what are we talking about? Hmm. 
I'll give you a hint. You can believe it. Oh, I had a Naruto movie. Naruto, uh, the last film. And the last of the series. Naruto is finishing off one of the biggest... Neither know, like, I'm not a huge Naruto fan. I am watching the final episodes at this point because I used to be a Naruto fan. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, you know, we, we did give it a shot numerous times. But the problem is the fillers really killed killed our love of the show. And some of the fan base as well just, just were way too annoying. So, Naruto's coming to an end. In hindsight, how old... Naruto's been going on for how many years? Uh, seven? Eight? Like nine, eight. ten years now at this point. I remember I started watching Ricardo, so that was when I was 20. Yeah, but if you think about it, the manga was out. The manga and anime were out in Japan oh, yeah, a couple so of years before that. Yeah. So I think it came out around 99, 2000. Maybe 2001. Uh, but, you know, that's 10, 11, 10, 11 years? Mm. That is crazy. It has to be, you know, that, that spans two decades it's one of the few anime that's you know gone into the new generation uh, you know I hate to say it it is one of the powerhouses next to Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z mm. that has gone that you know Dragon Ball went from the start of the 80s finished in the mid 90s and still has movies throughout mm. Naruto started in the 90, maybe 90s early 2000s it's mm. now in the new generation and it did do a lot for the anime community. It got a lot of people into anime over here. Mm. It's a lot of people's first anime. It was one of our first sort of long-going series after Dragon Ball Z. Because mm. Dragon Ball Z was... That was on TV. So that was our yeah, big... Yeah, Eric and then... Naruto, it was on TV, off TV, kind of Back replayed a lot the of... Same yeah. Series. So... Uh, they never really played it properly. Yeah, they never did a proper follow through. Well, I know that they, they have have it now over in the states, but we don't have it. Mm. Like they have shipped it all over there now. But so Naruto's ending. Things that are probably going to happen. Naruto is probably going to become a Hokage. It, it's been predicted since the first fucking episode. Sasuke's going to come back because that's what whole Shippuden was the whole thing about, was trying to get Sasuke back. Mm. Uh, which has already happened, really, at this point. And, and towards the end of the series, he comes back, Omitramaru is on their side because he wants to see what it would be like on the other side. Yeah, this, this is, you know, Dragon Ball Z with Vegeta. Vegeta was, you know, originally the bad guy, became the good guy. Now he likes wearing the pink shirt. Went back to being the bad guy and then good guy again. No, it wasn't really that it was bad. It was just he want he was kind of jealous of Goku's power. Imagine, yeah, imagine, with, yeah. No, he was, it was the, the, the brain power. control thing, though. Hmm? It was a sort of a brain control, wasn't it? Yeah, but then after a while he broke it. Even though I still imagine. Yeah. And then he he just used it to his own will to help him out. Anyway. Uh, see, but but that's the thing, though. Like, uh, Naru is all over. The show is all about friendship. Friendship, it, it really is. N- Naruto with Team Seven, uh, you know, Team Seven comprised of Sasuke and Sakura. How they grew together as a team, how he became friends with other people. For God's sake, Naruto becomes friends with the with uh, mm-hmm. what's the spirits called again? Oh, the the, the nine the, the the nine tails fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, he becomes friends with all those creatures out of the, the nine, nine things. And, you know, it is all about friendship at the end of the day. Friendships come and friendships go. That was the main thing. The main villain that's, you know, before the end of the series now, he used to be friends with the guy who... Him and the first Hokage were best friends. And they split apart, and that's how he went down the dark route. Because of that friend split. Yeah, it's all about friendship. Dragon Ball Z was all about teamwork. Need to know Goku pretty much trumped everyone. But it was all about the team. Um, there's always these shows because the it is one. It did promote a good message. It was all about enthusiasm and doing your own way and being good about a part of yourself. Wait a minute, this sounds a bit familiar. So Naruto is all about teamwork. 
Uh, optimistic message. Uh, the show is, you know, uh, mostly a- aimed towards a large, uh, a younger age group, but has gone into an older age group. Hold on, what, what is this show actually reminding you of now? Friends? My Little Pony. Oh, yeah. Well, it kind of is. But th- this is the thing. All right, good people. We want to... Hold on. Adventures. Same thing. We're, re- we're We have found a blockbuster formulaic method here. All right, so we need teamwork. We need friendship. Wait, this is how Yu-Gi-Oh! got his popularity in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... These are how these shows work. We want friendship, we want teamwork, we want an optimist, a good message to send out to the audience, and at the end of the day, we want to sell toys. Mm-hmm. I, and hey, uh, Naruto did have some good battles. I, I think, like, I have tried to get into it in the past, but, you know, between the fillers and the sh- shoddy animation they do in some of these scenes. I, I know it's a long going series, but guys, there's other ways you can cut a budget here. Get an indie band to do your opening, for example. Don't sell as much crap. Uh, produce more non-canon movies, and but a shorter series. And have it per season instead of continuously going throughout a year. That would have saved a million. I, I think there's at least five, six arcs that they could have just cut out completely. And still been able to make tons and tons of money. Uh, so, Kazuma, what's your thoughts on Naruto sort of ending up? Because you're the one that actually got me into Naruto. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it's not butter. You heard it here, folks. Kazuma's approach to Naruto is... It's like a big stick of butter. So, this has been another episode of Geek Era Podcast. Make sure you can check us out on Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Uh, our, our, our website at geekerapodcast at wordpress.com. <coughs> YouTube, Geek Era Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, same thing. Uh, you can also email us at geekerapodcast at gmail.com. Uh, Kazuma, do you have any other thoughts? No, I think it's different. Okay, so, what today? What today?